Hello and welcome to Firefighting in Canada This Week. Today's edition is brought to you by VFIS of Canada, a division of CVIS Incorporated, Canada's largest insurer of firefighters. I'm Jason Koblen and this is your Firefighting News. Your top story. Jenny Jones supports volunteer firefighters across Ontario with the Jenny's Heroes Canada grant. The OAFC announced the grant recipients this week. Then, a report on a deadly house fire that killed four people in Oshawa earlier this year showed that Oshawa Fire Services is understaffed. And lastly, Fire Chief of Hope BC and FFIC columnist Tom DeSorcy shared in the September issue his thoughts on not taking the image of the fire service for granted. The Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs announced the recipients of the Jenny's Heroes Canada grant, a grant developed by the Jenny Jones Foundation to give back to those who serve as volunteer firefighters in Ontario. The grant dollar amount was set to be $25,000, but Jenny doubled the amount to $50,000. The Foundation reached out to the OAFC in May, asking how they could give back to those who serve in their communities, and where a financial contribution would make a significant impact in Ontario. The OAFC recognized the potential to work with Jenny, providing a medium to reach volunteer fire departments in Ontario, knowing this opportunity would make a difference to the departments and their communities. More than 100 applications for the grant were received, and from there, six departments were chosen for various equipment needs and funding amounts. The departments that received the grant and the amounts awarded are Nolalu Emergency Services Team with $25,000, Pellet United Firefighters with $9,000, Laurentian Hills Fire Department with $7,500, Papineau Cameron Fire Department with $6,000, Wabagoon Fire Department with $3,000, and Reddit Volunteer Fire Department with $2,500. CBC says a report on a January fire that killed four people in Oshawa, Ontario, has outlined several deficiencies within the Oshawa Fire Services, including understaffing, and makes recommendations to prevent future tragedies like it. The Oshawa Firefighters Union carried out an investigation into OFS's response to the January 8th fire. OFS fire trucks regularly deploy with four firefighters, the minimum required by industry standards. But the report said the OFS should have an initial response of a minimum of 15 firefighters. It said the OFS should also consider increasing staffing to five or six firefighters on frontline trucks to meet National Fire Protection Association staffing objectives for response to tactical hazards, high hazard occupancies, and dense urban areas. Everyone knows the customer experience firsthand. We're all consumers, and at some point each and every day, we receive some form of service. Hopefully, we are treated properly as a customer. In the fire world, much has been written and said about treating the public fire departments to deal with, not as victims, but as customers, providing not only the anticipated or expected level of service, but often going above and beyond whenever possible. Leaving the public with a positive experience on what can be their worst day strengthens the reputation and brand of fire departments, and that's why departments should communicate a customer-first standard to the public. Volunteer Vision columnist and Fire Chief Tom DeSorcy shares in his article why it's important to not take the image of the fire service for granted. It's important to have a strong brand because the public's trust in, in us, in the organization, in the service, no matter where it is, is something that we could never repair or replace if it was damaged. And it's important because we've got this brand in place already that we need to work very hard every day and not take it for granted to maintain it. This is Annex Business Media's Niche TV. Thanks again to VFIS of Canada, a division of CVIS Incorporated, Canada's largest insurer of firefighters. Stay tuned for our next episode of Firefighting in Canada this week on Friday, October 19th. I'm Jason Koblen. See you next time.